Hey, welcome back everybody. Steve Looney here from graphicdesignertips.com. This is episode number five of my new professional logo design series. Hope you're liking it so far. These logo designs, like I said, are professional. And the reason they're professional, and it's not because I designed them, the reason they're professional is because they went through a whole process. And I'm gonna break the process down. These tutorials aren't just gonna show you how to use the pen tool and how to use text. They're really gonna go into why I did specific things and theory around everything that goes into this process, which is pretty cool. But before I jump into building this logo and critiquing it, I just want to let you know that there is an extended version of this video and every video in this series in my new course. And you can check it out on my website or in the description below. But basically, what I go over are a lot of things that were involved in this specific project and every specific project in the series, but including stuff like initial drafts and revisions and you know bumps in the road and things that went on and interactions with clients and stuff like that just to kind of show you the whole process because if you're looking and learning uh, wanting to learn how to make money building logos there's obviously a process you want to get confident at doing so that's what I'm going to be talking about in there because for the last few years I've been very successful at at uh, logo designs with clients so I'm basically going to be passing on that knowledge to you now Okay, so my client uh, for the Haber Consulting Group, basically they are in the field of dealing with real estate donations. So whether they be for housing or commercial properties, but I wanted to make sure that this didn't have the total look and feel of somebody that was a contractor. Um, it's a hard look to get away from. Um, that's why I wanted to stick with more elegant type of fonts uh, with uh, the font that's called Trahan or Trajan. I really need to figure out how to pronounce that correctly, uh, pro. So you got the word Haber, which spans out because it's only five letters. So it spans out with a lot of tracking between the letters um, to basically meet the width of Consulting Group Inc. Now, Inc. does not have to be as prominent as everything else. Um, in fact, it, it actually be a little bit smaller. Um, the G and the C on these two words, the first letters, they're actually in small caps like I did in episode two with uh, the Cornerstone logo. And uh, small caps is another great thing you can use. Uh, but basically, we stuck with two colors that are, are almost very similar because we're using a dark blue and we're using a, a, a gray, uh, essentially, um, a darker gray. Now, I took that darker gray or that black and I also repeated it in the window right here and I took the blue and I continued it through the roof the chimney and the other peak whether that be uh, another part of a of the one housing unit or another ha or a multiple housing use it unit um, because that's also something that they really specialize in so um, there's so many ways to look at this uh, this logo looks really good in black and white and it's just it's just a nice block you know it's not it's not too heavy although it is heavy here you'd rather have it heavy towards the left than the right because we do read left to right um, and I'm there are many logos like this but I don't I, personally I tend to design left to right um, so let me know in the comments below what you noticed that I didn't obviously I designed it but um, it was a clients it was a clients feedback and say in the end that got us to this level uh, so let me get into Adobe Illustrator CC 2014 and show you how easy it is to build this logo Okay, so now we are in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014, or CC, standing for Creative Cloud, just so you know. I do mention that in most of my videos. Um, but this will basically be able to be built in uh, any version of uh, Illustrator back to at least CS2 um, with most of the same tools. But I just want to let you know on the top, I obviously put the uh, colors that are a part of this logo. So you can add them to your swatches very simply by uh, finding out the color. And then you can come in here, you can type out that number. So we go 003771, and then we're going to hit OK. And now that we hit OK, we can literally drag it, boom, right into our swatches right there. So what I first want to do is, um, this is a really easy logo to build, but I want to mention, as I do in every video, and I don't care if I sound uh, like I'm repeating myself, but this video might take 10, 15 minutes, but this logo in real realistically took a few hours um, of my time going back and forth with the client, uh, coming up with ideas, researching, uh, chatting with the client initially about, 
um, what they wanted, what they liked, what they did not like. So this final concept um, in the comments, you might say, you know, something, oh, this is a simple logo. I've seen many logos like this, this and that. But you know what, this comes, this came after a lot of time uh, refining with the client. So getting back to um, the actual tutorial, what we first want to do is we want to uh, type out the words uh, Haber. Uh, consulting group Inc. So we're going to hit T on our keyboard for the type tool and we're just going to type out H A B E R and we're going to hit escape. We're going to select that font Trojan Pro and we're just going to hit hold shift. We're going to scale this up using that corner point right there. And I don't believe I used the, the bold version. No, I did not. All right. And we're literally just going to go to option click shift. So we're going to make another text box and we're going to type out consulting group but we're just going to capitalize the C. All right, so we're gonna type C-O-N-S-U-L-T-I-N-G group. And we're gonna escape. All right, cool. Let me just see something really quick. Okay, cool. All right, so I did mention earlier that uh, this was in small caps and indeed, uh, it is not in small caps because this font is only in capitals. So if you see, I have the C right there. I'm going to do a lowercase C right next to it. Um, you see how it changes? I'm going to do the O next to the O. So no matter what, it's always going to, it's going to give that effect of basically small caps. Small caps is, uh, is an option in the, in the character palette, which I'm going to show you. You come up here, character. You click the options and then you could do small caps where it'll basically make capitals of every lowercase letter. But then when you actually make a capital, like when you hold shift on a specific letter, it'll make that capital bigger than the other capitals. So I hope you just understood what I said. It's more of um, an experimental thing. So experiment and see what I'm talking about. What I now want to do is I want to take the word ink and I just want to select that. And I just want to make that a little bit smaller. We're going to hit escape. And we're going to scale that up so the the period kind of ends pretty much where that ends. Just you know, I was I was actually taught if I pull a rule that when you have something hanging off the edge, you want to go to where it's it's still a little bit fatter than that area, and that's where you kind of want to set your end point. All right, so that's technically where I should be ending this. Um, and in some cases it works, and in some cases it doesn't. In this case, it actually doesn't work. I'd have to pull that over a little bit more because you can see that hanging out, and it just bothers me a little bit. Um, okay, so Consulting Group Inc., that's definitely in that black. We're going to scale this down. Uh, we're going to uh, shift it down, excuse me. We're going to zoom out. And what we're now going to do is we're going to take the pen tool, and I'm going to zoom in on this so you can literally just do it right over the screen. Well, you can take a screenshot, pull it into Illustrator, and then uh, go over it. Um, but what I want to do is I want to click that pencil. I want to click here. I want to hold shift. So, because if I don't hold shift, this is going to happen. If I hold shift, you're going to get a nice flat line. I'm going to come up to here. Boom. 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 And I'm going to come back to this point. I'm going to close it. I'm not going to make the chimney right now. And you're going to see why in a second. Because if I made the chimney, I couldn't teach you more things. So what we're now going to do is we're going to come up in here to our rectangle tool. We're now going to make that chimney 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 however you want to say it uh we're gonna hit the v on our keyboard we're gonna hold shift and we're gonna select this so now we basically selected both items and i'm gonna move it down so right now i have a roof and i have a chimney so what i want to do is i want to let's turn this red for a second we're gonna select both of these actually no i'm not i'm going to go to option click and i'm going to shift this over for a second I'm now going to scale this down. So hold shift and we're going to scale this down. And let's see what I did here. Okay. So the bottoms line up. So if I, with your rulers or command R, make sure you, you pull a rule right here. So the bottom points line up right on the bottom. Okay. And we're just going to scale this up a little bit. All right, cool. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come into our, Pen tool, and we're going to make a shape over here where we're basically going to cut that out, that stuff that's extending over. And we're going to hold, hold, hit V on our keyboard, hold shift now, and now click the second item. So you select two. And we're going to go to Pathfinder minus front. Okay. So now we have this part of the house and that part of the house right there, which is still a lot bigger. 
So I can even scale this down just a little bit more. I'm going to hit A on my keyboard, select this line segment, and I'm going to pull that in. Move that up a little bit. Okay, cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select all these elements, and we're going to come into the Pathfinder and hit Unite. So that's going to make it one shape. So I put any color in there. It's basically making it one. It is one shape now. I'm now going to pull that shape over here. And there's certain things I did refine in it. I did um, I did want to make sure that the house was uh, pretty much lined up with uh, both sides of the H close enough. It's off a little bit on here um, because if it's skinnier, you know, it, it's still going to it's going to look funky compared to that wide H over there. Um, also, what I want to do is I want to hit uh, V on my keyboard. I want to scale this down a little bit. So this point doesn't go too much past the R actually in the original it actually goes pretty much in the middle of the R and I'm now going to take this I'm going to scoot I'm going to take this whole line actually I'm going to scoot this down a little bit I'm going to pull this back up just to kind of again reach the width of that whole H right there uh, what I now want to do is I want to hit V on my keyboard and I'm going to make a gradient which is actually already in here it's a blue to black but the way you do that is um, you know just say we have red to yellow we're going to take that blue and we're going to take it the black right there very simply. Actually, I know what I'm, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that blue. I'm going to put it blue and then blue. And I'm going to take the one blue and I'm just going to make the black more black in it. So it's a darker version of that blue. So it, it, it gradates smoothly. And we're going to just make that a little gradient right there. We are now going to hit. Whole, uh, we're going to select that word Haber and we're now going to go to type create outlines and we're going to hit I on our keyboard the eyedrop tool we're going to select that gradient and again hit the gradient tool and we're just going to move this gradient around a little bit and hit the V on on the keyboard to kind of get out of there lastly what we're going to do is we're going to hit the rectangle tool we're going to make a little rectangle over here we need to break that into four pieces um, so after turning that black, we're just going to literally take another rectangle here. And select both of these. And now we're going to align it through the center point. And we're now going to select again, Command C, Command F, paste in front. And we're going to hit E on our keyboard. Now we get this little rotation. We're going to rotate it, hold Shift so it snaps into point. And then boom, we have it right there. You can, either, you can leave that on top if you want, or you can select all three of these, and you can come into Pathfinder minus front, and so it's basically already cut out. So it's part of the refining process. You wouldn't want to leave a client with those little boxes on top of it hiding it, although visually it looks correct. It's actually incorrect the way that you're sending it to them. Um, let's see. What I might do here is I might just move this away a little bit, give it a little bit of breathing room. Same thing with the Consulting Group Inc., and that is that is it we have completed this logo all right so although that logo was a quick one I'm, I'm sure there's definitely something that you learned in this video so please definitely let me know in the comments below what you learned in this video that you can now take and use in your own project that can hopefully let you land a project or do a project even more efficiently uh, just to make your clients happy and obviously grow your business uh, hit the subscribe button on the screen to make sure that you get these videos before anybody else does or you get them quicker uh, basically than anybody else. And um, if you're interested in really getting to that next level and learning uh, how to do things the right way and, and the basically the secrets, the process of this whole logo design to make money at this stuff, definitely subscribe to my online course. Uh, you'll be able to find it by clicking the uh, screen right now or going to my website or the link in the description of the video. So uh, if you have any questions, definitely email me at help at graphicdesignertips.com. If not, leave them in the comments and I will see you all for the next video. Have a great night. Peace.